All right, what is up my friends? Welcome to the new Capenna complete set review. We do this every time. Every new set, constructed, limited, every single card. We're doing blue in this section. I just did white. Anything you miss is on YouTube, folks, right? We do seven sections, all the colors, multicolored, and then it colorless and lands, all right? So, first time here at the follow button, YouTube folks, like, comment, subscribe. We're going over all the cards. We're giving a best in show. We're giving a sleeper card pick, a trap card pick, and then our newest award, the Bomb and Common for all you drafters out there, all right? So, let's get in with blue here. Let's get started, jumping right in with All-Seeing Arbiter, a mythic to start off the, uh, the show. Six mana for a 5-4 flying avatar. Whenever it ETBs or attacks, draw two, and then discard a card, which is pretty good, which is pretty good. Whenever you discard a card, target creature and opponent controls gets minus X, minus O, until your next turn, where X is the number of different mana values among cards in your graveyard. So this is like a mechanic in, uh, I'm not sure if it's mechanics even like tied to a, a family or not, but wanting to see different mana values in your graveyard. Kind of a weird little mechanic, honestly. And um, this card is kind of like your typical unbeatable limited bomb that is not going to see play constructed. Uh, six mana for a 5-4 with no way to protect itself is not super exciting. It does nice that it draws some cards, but all in all, you know, giving minus X minus O constructed is not super exciting. Uh, you play this and they just kill it and you draw a card or two. Doesn't have flash, doesn't protect itself. Just a pretty bad constructed card. Great limited card though. Uh, bomb and limited, not even close. Big flyer, draws cards, kills her stuff. Uh, just not exciting though. Not super, super exciting overall. It's kind of a dud. Kind of a dud. Up next is Backstreet Bruiser. Backstreet's bruising. All right. Listen. When I was a kid, I was into like corn and Limp biscuit, like you know, heavy new metal stuff. But everybody by the Backstreet Boys, if you imagine that synth as like a heavy guitar, that song banks. All right. That song banks. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Backstreet Bruiser is a two mana Cephalid Rogue. It's a 3 3 defender. So we see this a lot in limited, honestly. This is a 3 3 defender for two. Has some caveat to attack. As long as there are two or more counters among creatures you control, Backstreet Bruiser can attack as though it didn't have defender. So this card's solid because some decks are just happy to play a 3 3 for two to defend with in the early game, which is fine. And then uh, the Broker's mechanic, which is the, the Bant family. Uh, is all about counters. So if you can actively turn this on, this card's great. So this card goes from like, okay defensive creature to super solid card. Uh, so in limited, this card's super solid. Super solid card will scale uh, how as to how good it is based on the counters in your deck. But again, some decks are just gonna want a defender and this card does that. So solid limited card. Don't underestimate it. Don't underestimate it. Up next is Broker's Veteran. Two mana for a two one. When it dies, you put a shield counter on a creature you control. Again, shield counter is a counter that means that the creature would take damage or just be destroyed. Instead, the shield counter gets shattered. So, kind of a cool two-drop, honestly. Because you play this on turn two. Then on turn three, you can play another creature and attack. And if they block and you trade, you put the shield on your three-drop, which is pretty good, honestly. Shield can almost be a card advantage, uh, which is great. So, this is a solid two-drop. It's fine. Uh, it's not a citizen, just a soldier. But it is a, a reasonable two-drop. Nothing insanely good, but just solid. It's a very solid two drop. Shield counters are pretty good. Solid two drop. Case the joint. Four mana for an instant. Draw two. Then look at the top card of each player's library. Uh, sure. Pop quiz, hot shot. This is uh, this is an okay card. It's not particularly exciting. This is very very close to just like inspiration. A six mana, a six mana, four mana draw two. That's like not really good enough uh, in anything, but. It's fine. If your deck wants a instant speed draw two for four, this does that. I don't really think most decks will want this effect in limited and then constructed. There are 10,000 better options than this. So all in all, kind of an unexciting card. Definitely not behold the multiverse. Uh, definitely not. Cut your losses. Six mana for a blue rare sorcery. And we get to see the casualty mechanics. This is the maestros mechanic. Casualty. Casualty number. As you cast a spell... You may sacrifice a creature with power of the number or greater. When you do copy the spell, you may choose new targets. So, pretty cool mechanic that allows you to use your creature creatures to, to double the effects of your spells. Pretty cool. This one is six mana. Target player mills half their library around it down. 
Sack creature power to a raider. You get two copies of that. Of course, half of half is not, not as good as the first half is. So if they have 30 cards, they have 15 cards, then they have seven cards or six cards or whatever. Um, that's, oh, that's, that's, that's okay. That's not, you know, necessarily great. Not particularly exciting. Six mana for a mill effect isn't super cool. So the mechanic is great. This card, not so great. Uh, in limited, if you're like a long game deck playing tons of 3-3 defenders for two with no way to win, sure, this card could probably do it for you. But on the whole, this card's pretty unexciting despite being a very good mechanic, which we'll get to more of as we go on. Disable Stroke. Card's freaking great. Bingo. I don't have to tell you, card's awesome. I love this card. Uh, not going to be as good as it was in Cal Diamond Limited because of the, the less foretell cards, but very good constructed card. Okay, limited card sometimes. It's fine. Echo Inspector, full mana for a 2-3 flyer with Connive. And Connive is the ability where you draw a card and then discard a card. If you discard a non-land card, you put a counter on the creature. So, in theory, this could pretty easily be a 3-4 flyer for 4, which is a very good rate. But again, you need to be aware of it in limited. Typically, looters are good because you're discarding lands, not creatures. Because your, your looters help you not flood. So, discarding a spell to this, there is a cost. Now, there are some cards that make you want to, what, what you want to discard. We'll see those as, as time goes on, which improves the value of this card in your draft deck. But still a very solid card, I, I think, um, in limited. It, we'll see. I think it depends on how many things you, you have that you want to discard. Uh, you have a lot, of, a lot of them. This card's very, very good. If you don't, this card's kind of eh. And obviously not for reconstructed. Errant Street Artist. So we're one. One Blue Legend. It's an 03 Flash Defender with Haste. Just your average 03 defender with haste, no big deal. Pay two mana, tap to copy target spell you control that wasn't cast. So, that means that it has to be copying a thing that was pretty much already copied. Because uh, you can't have cast it. Uh, this is like a lot of extra hoops to go through. This can copy your, your uh, casualty cards. So you have your casualty card, you can, you're can you not cashing the copy, so you can copy the copy. Uh, yo, bro. But unfortunately, uh, it's just not that exciting otherwise. It's an 0-3 for one. It, it, it can block. This is the kind of card where if you're trying to do really cool shit, this card can probably do that. But in a more competitive uh, you know, aspect, it's just worse than Galvatic Iteration if you want to copy your spells. So, pretty fun card, pretty cool card. I'm sure we'll go to a lot, go to a lot of commander decks and kind of cool stuff like that, but I think for the most part, this card's kind of a miss. Uh, if you're playing limited and you have a number of casualty effects, maybe, uh, maybe, but all in all, eh. Up next is even the score. Blue, 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 X, instant, draw X cards. This card costs blue, 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 less if an opponent has drawn four or more cards this turn. So good against Brainstorm and good against Jace the Mind Sculptor. But all in all, if your opponent drew four cards this turn, uh, so you get nothing. Get wrecked. So you're probably losing anyway. Honestly, you know, like this card's not very good for that. And then blue, blue, blue X to draw cards not good either. Uh, this card just not really good on either side. Uh, just not very good. Not very good. In limited, this card's all right. Um, if you're looking for a good mana sink, draw some cards in the mid game and late game and limited. Sure, this is fine. Uh, if your opponent drew four cards in limited, you're probably also going to get wrecked. But um, yeah, not a super exciting card. Not a super exciting card. Up next is Expendable Lackey. It's our bomb in common. This card is great. Uh, and I'm really, really happy that Wizards of the Coast has been designing a lot of really good one drops in limited. For the longest time, uh, there were almost zero playable one drops in limited. Uh, if it was a one drop, it wasn't playable. That was it. Don't think about it. Don't even waste your time. Uh, not playable. But in the last, you know, few sets, which have all been great limited sets for the most part, uh, they're making a lot of good limited guard cards in a red or one drops is great. And this card is excellent for a number of reasons. So we have a one one for one. Whatever. When it's in your graveyard, you pay two and exile it, and you get a one one unblockable. This is your fodder card. This is your enabler for all of your. Uh, all of your ma maestro shenanigans. Uh, so, you want to sacrifice creatures? This is a great one to sacrifice. You can do it twice, which is awesome. Uh, card's great. You can mill it off of some of the self-mill effects, which is really, really cool. 
Uh, this card is going to be much better than it looks, just like Lantern Bearer. Lantern Bearer ended up being uh, one of the best, if not the best, blue common in that set, despite looking so innocent. Uh, but this is the kind of card that just makes all of your other card better. You can connive it. You can sack it to your uh, casualty effects. Uh, you can mill it. You can whatever it is. It just does a whole bunch of different things. It just makes your deck better. The more of you, these you have, the better your deck's going to be. This card is great. Do not underestimate it. Constructed, uh, there are some good blue connive, oh, not connive cards, some blue casualty cards, but it's probably not there constructed. I think if you could activate it as an instant, it would be good enough in constructed. And the fact that that line is there, activate only as a sorcery, means that they thought this card was really good internally, and they wanted to tone it down a little bit, which is to be be, be aware of that. You know, that, that's the kind of thing you notice as a as a person evaluating cards, like, hey, like, they wanted to tone this card down a bit. Why? Why? So, card's great. I can't wait to draft this card in Bronze Mythic. Card's awesome. Card's awesome. Fairy Vandal returns. An Eldrain card hopping onto the uh, the city world here. 2 mana for a 1-2 flash flying fairy rogue. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a counter on this. Of course, this is a connive payoff, so you're doing actually extra conniving. One counter on this, we got a 2-3 flyer for two, and that's great. So, a very solid limited card. Constructed? Probably not. Uh, never really got there, Constructed. But in limited, great card. Great card. Like it a lot. Hypnotic uh, Grifter. One mana for a 1-2. Human Rogue. Pay 3 and Connive. Um, this card's okay. It's honestly funny because I feel like you're going to want this card lands in this card a lot. Because it's more of like a looter than like a connive kind of card. Because you don't really care about counters on this card. Uh, but an okay mana sink for your draft deck. This card's alright. This card's alright. And then a Constructed? Probably not. But... Ledger Shredder, 2 out of 4, a 1 3 Flying Bird Advisor. Storm Crow, eat your heart out. Now his failure Poor Storm Crow. Complete. Poor Storm Crow. 1 3 Flyer for 2. Whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, this card connives. Now, note that this is both players. So if they play a second spell, you connive again. And this thing, obviously, put one counter on it. Now it's 2-4 flyer. That's pretty good. Put another counter on it. That's a 3-5 flyer. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And this is also a card that just loots. It gets cards into your graveyard. So if you're doing if you're doing graveyard kind of stuff, uh, maybe Madness in Historic, you're playing a, if you're playing a, you know, Fire Temper and stuff like that. Uh, this card's pretty good. It's a pretty good enabler. I think this card's a little kind of a little sneaky here. You know, possible sleeper, uh, not the sleeper card, but a possible sleeper. Uh, this card's good. This card's good. I like it a lot. And uh, I think that you're going to want to play it with things that you care about the graveyard. But if you are caring about the graveyard, this card's super solid. Super solid. And then in limited, just great. Uh, discard one card to this, and your 2-4 flyer over 2 is unbelievable. So, card's great. Card's great. Up next is a little chat. A little chat. And this card is also very good. 2 mana for an instant. Casualty 1. So, once again, the casualty ability. Sacrifice a creature of power 1 or greater. When you do, you may copy this spell. Logo top two cards of your library, one of them in your hand, one on the bottom. This is very, very similar to Deadly Dispute. Uh, two mana instant sack creature, draw two. You don't get a treasure, but you do get to have more card selection. This card this card sees four cards, not two. So it's almost like a, sort of like a uh, hold the multiverse kind of effect. Uh, no treasure, but it's also in blue. And there's another card in blue, it also is casualty, but also is a two mana instant we'll get to in a bit that plays very well with this as well. This card's great. This card's awesome. Um, I don't recall my sleepers for this set. This card is very, very good. Definite potential sleeper. And uh, definitely a card to watch out for, for sure. Up next is Majestic Metamorphosis. Three mana for an instant. So until end of turn, target artifact or creature has a 4-4 flying angel. Draw a card. This card's good, honestly. Um, in the last set, there was uh, the instant that made it a 4-5 and drew a card. I like that card a lot. Uh, it was obviously better in that set because of the uh, the ninja effects where you, you want, like actively wanted to block. Suit up, that's the card. And um, I think this is a little worse than suit up is because the that fifth toughness was huge. But these cards, you're almost like trained to see them and think they're bad because they usually are bad. But every set, they just like add more stats to the card, add more stats to the card, add more stats to the card. And now they're pretty good. You know, and even if you just like, 
you have a 2 2 in play and the board's gummed up and you just make your 2 2 a 4 4 flyer, attack for 4 and draw a card. That's pretty good too, honestly. That's pretty good too. So, solid card. This is not a card you're going out of your way to draft, but it's a card that I would not be unhappy to have in my deck. It's a solid card. Cantrip is great. And if you end up in a spot where, like, I have a 3 3, you have a 3 3, I attack, you block, I cast this and cantrip, draw a card, that's great too. That's great too. So, I like this card a lot. Super sweet. Cool draft card. Cool draft card. Up next is Make it Disappear. And, uh, we got our best in show. We got our best in show. It's funny, because I kind of want to give the best in show award to Make Disappear and a little chat at the same time, because they play so well together. So Make Disappear is a two mana counter spell, basically Quench, two mana instant, counter spell as you pay two. Now the problem is that Quench is not really good enough for Constructed. It is close. It is close. It has seen some fringe play, but it goes dead a little too fast. This card helps to solve that problem with the casualty ability. So you can sacrifice any creature, uh, power one or more. You can double the spell and counter now unless you pay four, which is great. And if you're not playing creatures, this card's not that good, obviously. But there are a lot of good fodder creatures, especially in blue-black. So you sacrifice a decayed token, a shambling guest, an eye twitch, uh, whatever it might be. And the fact that you have this card at 2 mana with Casualty 1, and you have the card draw spell at 2 mana with Casualty 1, means that now your opponents have a spot where like, well, what do I do? Do I cast a spell or not? Will they draw cards? Will they have a counter spell? It just plays really, really well. Don't forget the card Overcharged Amalgam exists, and uh, that plays pretty well with this strategy also. Uh, so I think this card's great. I think this card's super awesome. Uh, I like it a lot, and I love the the slight upgrade to Quench here. Recognizing that Mana Leak might be too good, but Quench wasn't good enough and kind of finding that middle ground. I think this card's awesome. It's super great. Um, I like it a lot. Card's great. And Limited, the card, it's a little worse than Limited because the games go longer. Uh, so I would temper your expectations there. But in Constructed, I think this card's great. I think this card's great. I like it a lot. Best in show for Blue, Make Disappear. Up next is Obscura Initiate. It's a wind drake. Two mana, two, two flyer for three, which are not good and limited anymore. And uh, two mana to give it lifelink. This card is okay. Um, lifelink is a good ability. If your deck is like lacking mana sinks and you want the evasive threat, it's okay. But this card is mostly pretty mopey. Uh, wind drake hasn't been good for a long time. Hasn't been good for a long time. Uh, so not thrilled about this card, but if it's in your deck, sure. If you have ways to pump it uh, with, you know, kind of brokers kind of cards, put counters on it, et cetera, et cetera. Then we're talking a little bit differently here. So, you know, then, then we have, they have a little more value. Uh, it is a citizen also, which is kind of nice, but by itself, not quite good enough. I'd want things to do with this card before we're able to really use it. An offer you can't refuse. It's a trap. So people are seeing this card and thinking about older formats. You know, these set reviews try to encompass everything. We do limited, we do constructed, we do standard. We also occasionally mention older formats. And an offer you can't refuse is one mana instant. Counter a non-creature spell. So one mana negate, which is very, very powerful in older formats where mana efficiency is everything. Uh, your opponent gets two treasures, though. That's a huge, huge, huge cost. Um, so looking at a card like Swan Song, which is very, very similar, but they get a 2-2. Two -two. If you're a combo deck... You don't necessarily care that much about a 2-2, because ideally you're going to win the game in a turn or two and not care otherwise. The problem is, if you give them two treasures, now they have managed to cast another Spell Pierce, or Counter Spell, or whatever it else may be. Uh, so, this card is just like, pretty much strictly worse than Swan Song, I think, in almost every aspect. I think Swan Song doesn't counter everything, I don't think, right? I did look at the text on Swan Song, honestly. Um... Uh, yeah, Swan Song is counter target enchantment, instant or sorcery. So it can counter things that that aren't that, but realistically, instant sorcery, enchantment are the things you most want to uh, counter. So I think this card will see basically no play um, for the most part as a combo defender. And if you're playing it in any fair capacity in standard or in any format where you're not trying to combo and kill in one turn, just play a gate. <laughs> just 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 play a gate. All right, uh, not a very good card. Not a very good card. Up next is get out the way. No, no one. Out of the way. This is our blue color hoser. 
Four mana for an instant. Return Narga non land permanent and draw a card, which is fine. Uh, which is fine. Um, and then it costs two S to target a green turn, a green, green permanent. This is your cyborg card in uh, in constructed. It's good. Two mana repulse is pretty solid. And then a limited four mana bouncier thing draw a card really isn't that bad. And all of his color hosers. There's a lot of three color cards in this set, and there's a good chance it's gonna be green. So solid limited card for sure. Definitely a playable cyborg card constructed. Solid card. Solid card. Up next is Psionic Snoop. Snoop Gob. They mana for an 03 flash with connive. Not very good. Uh it's kind of cool because like it's effectively a 1-4 flash blocker if you wanted. But that doesn't really kill enough stuff. If this was like even like a 1-2 maybe or a 1-3, and you could like reliably ambush a 2-2 with it, sure. If your opponent has a lot of 2-1s or 1-1s, one sure. But this card's pretty bad. Uh, it's pretty bad. It's not very exciting at all. Uh, this is not great. It's not great. Psychic Pickpocket. We have a 5-mana 3-2. When ETBs connive, if you connive, bounce something. Solid limited card. Solid limited card. Mostly going to be a 4-2. Uh, for five, it bounces a thing, which is totally reasonable. Totally reasonable card, limited. Nothing amazing, but solid. Solid card. Public Enemy. This is just a commander card. I, I don't know. Who, who put this here? I, Somebody's playing a prank I don't know what's me. going on. The meta for an enchantment aura. Uh, enchant creature. All creatures attack enchanted creature's controller. Each combat, if able. Uh, so in a one-on-one -on -one game magic, that text means almost nothing. Um... It's almost worse than nothing, honestly. I guess it makes makes your opponents. I'm sorry, hold on. Let me actually think about this. Um, I'm sorry. You can make your opponent attack you, I guess. You put it on your own creature and draw a card. Okay, I, I sort of like didn't really parse that when I first read the card the first time. Uh, so I I apologize. My my I'm incorrect here. So you can target your own creature, make them attack into you, and you draw a card when it dies. But that's pretty sketchy also, honestly. Unless you're playing a lot of good defensive creatures, you can like set up like a pretty bad combat step for your opponent. Uh, this card seems pretty bad. This seems pretty bad. I don't know. It's a weird card. It's a very, very weird card. Very, very sketchy. Very sketchy. Put it on Brash Taunter. Sure. That's cute. That's cute. Reservoir Kraken is next. Si uh, four mana for a 6-6 six, six, Trample Ward 2. So great stats, of course. Uh, but there is a catch. Mini Mage Combat, if it's untapped... Any opponent may tap an untapped creature they control. If they do, you tap the Kraken, but you make a 1-1 unblockable fish. This card is going to make a lot of people sad. Uh, this card is a lot worse than it looks. Uh, close to being a trap card. And constructed, uh, it, the Ward 2 is nice, don't get me wrong. But this card's just rarely going to do what you want it to do. In limited, it's fine. In limited, it's just like a, a make, one, make a 1-1 factory, which is kind of okay. But... For the most part, in Constructed, this card is just not really going to be there. Um, this is not Desecration Demon or some other good 6-6. Six, six. Uh, not very exciting. Not very exciting. Uh, a lot of stats. Good and limited. But up next is Rooftop Nuisance. And I think this is a great limited card. Three mana for a sorcery. Casualty 1. Tap a creature. Doesn't untap. Draw a card. This card is kind of freaking awesome. So you play this. You connive it. I'm sorry. You, uh, you casualty it. You get to copy it, draw two cards, tap two things, and they both don't untap. This card's awesome. Uh, and this card's good on both sides, where if you're an aggro deck, this is a great way to kind of close the game out. You just tap two other things. And if you're a, a slower deck, it's kind of just like grinding away. Just tap two things, draw two cards, and slow the game down. This card's awesome. Uh, great common. Great limited common. Phenomenal card. Constructed, no, but very, very solid limited card. Would not be surprised if this ends up being one of, the, one, of the, one of the best blue commons, honestly. Real good card. Real good card. Run out of town. Four mana for an instant. Not land permanence, top or bottom of library. This is your average, okay, removal spell in blue. It's fine. Fine limited card. Nothing incredible, but solid. 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 Security by Vast. Two mana for a enchantment aura. Enchanted creature. As long as enchanted creature is attacking alone, it can't be blocked. One of our enchanted creature has... Or whenever an enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, it connives. Card's pretty bad. Card's pretty bad. Uh, if you're desperate for a way to break through, sure. Uh, I guess, you know. But this card's just asking for card disadvantage. Attacking alone is a pretty, pretty big downside. 
Uh, and conniving is not a good enough upside. Uh, just a bad common. Just a bad common. Sewer Crocodile. Six mana for a 4-6. That is a honky-chonky croc. Four mana uh, for unblockable. If you have five or more mana values among cards in your graveyard, you can make it unblockable for one mana, which is kind of like not super relevant. But if you need a top end card and limited, this will do it for you. You know, it's big, it blocks well, uh, and it does win the game. So this is the kind of card where like, if you have a good grindy limited deck and you need a way to win the game, that's it. This does it. It's fine. It's a fine card. Uh, it blocks really, really well, which is very important. And then it closes the game out. It's unblockable. So solid draft card. Not every deck wants this card. If you open up a good rare or two and don't need this card to win the game, sure. But if you're looking for a way to win the game in limited, you definitely do worse than this. You can definitely do worse than this. Sleep with the fishes. We got four mana for an enchantment or enchant creature. When it ETPs, tap the creature and make a fish. Doesn't untap. This card's good. This card is a, a variation on the typical common blue removal spell. Uh, doesn't have flash, so which, which these usually do. But getting a one one's pretty great. Uh, it's chump blocker. It's a it's a fodder for your casualty cards. It's a clock. Uh, good solid removal spell. Good solid removal spell. Slip out the back. We got a sleeper card here, folks. This card is actually really good. One blue instant. Put a plus plus encounter on target creature and it phases out. So, of course, for those who don't know, phasing basically means that until your next turn, it doesn't exist. Uh, it does not leave and return, so it will not flicker and trigger ETB effects, but can't be destroyed, can't be targeted, can't be wrathed. Phasing answers almost everything. One of the problems that protection spells often have is they have holes. So... If I give the creature indestructible, they exile it with vanishing first. If I give it a shield counter, they give it minus X, minus X. If I give it, you know, um, hexproof, they play a Wrath of God. You know, so this card covers all of them. Because you've all been in that spot before where we have Snakeskin Veil and they cast a Wrath. I have Tamiyo Safekeeping and they play a, a Meat of Massacre. You know, where this card, no matter what, will save your thing always. Always, always, always. And it augments, too, with a plus plus encounter as well. Uh, this card's great. This card's really, really good. I think if you're playing um, any sort of Magecraft deck, Prowess deck, maybe even Azorius Auras and Historic, um, any deck that wants to play this sort of dive-down effect, this is probably the best dive-down effect maybe ever printed, honestly. I think this card's better than Snakeskin Veil. Uh, it's very, very good. Uh, very, very good. like it a lot. I guess you can't win combat with it like Snakeskin Veil. Uh... So that is fair. It can't just be a pump spell. But if you're playing this card, your goal is to protect your creatures, and this card does that. This card does that really, really well, which I think is awesome. So really good card. Like it a lot. And limited, it's uh, pretty pretty great as well. Card's great. Definitely more of a constructed card than a limited card. And you can phase the blocker out too. It is definitely true. You can use it on your opponent's stuff as well, which is kind of cool. So card's great. Love it. Undercover Operative. We have a 4-mana clone that gets a shield counter. This is a, a good limited card, not really for constructed. Fun casual card, fun commander card for sure. Uh, shield counters are quite good. Gonna be good limited. Constructed, just not good enough. Just not good enough. Wing, sh Wing Shield Agent. I read Wind Shield Agent and I was like, yo, we're driving cars now. Wing Shield Agent, three mana for a two, three. EDVs with a shield counter on it. Whenever it attacks, up to one other target creature gains flying on a turn. This card is a really good limited card. Uh, a 2-3 three for 3 with a shield counter on it, I think is almost good enough by itself. Uh, because you can offer the trade, it stays alive again. Kind of like a weird persist effect. But this thing also gives things flying too. Super solid limited card. Super solid limited card. A lot better if you're playing uh, the counter Z Brokers or stuff, but card's great. Wiretapping. This is the blue hideaway rare. 5 minute for enchantment to hideaway 5. Again, look at top 5. Pick one, put it under it face down. If you draw your first card during each of your draw steps, draw a card. Then if you have nine or more cards in hand, play the card for free. Uh, this card sucks. Um, this is a five mana Honden of Seeing Winds, you know, personal Howling Mind type card, uh, which are typically very, very bad. Doesn't affect the board at all. Uh, drawing two cards turns awesome, but you need to do something else. And then nine cards is such a win more effect as well. Uh, just not a very good card. In limited, if your deck is slow and you have a lot of good defensive cards, sure. But for the most part, not a very good card. Not a very good card. People are going to play this card and then die two turns later a lot. Uh, a lot. 
Witness Protection. I love this card. Uh, I love this card. Uh, I would have liked to have made it one of the awards. I did not. Uh, we're talking about a Blue White Aura as an Historic. This card is awesome. Uh, really, really good aura here. There's a huge difference between two mana and one mana. And Blue doesn't get much good removal. This is a good spell. This is a good spell. Uh, make Emrakul into a legitimate business person, right? Emrakul's got the tie on. Is uh, is going to work, right? We have right? Uh, that's pretty fun. But uh, nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. But yeah, this card's very, very good. Uh, slam dunk in Azorius Auras in Historic. And then reasonable removal in a lot of other spots. One mana kill spells is great. Uh, love it. Great flavor. Great card. Powerful. Solid. Probably a good pauper card. Uh, just a good card. Just a good, good, solid card. So, that's it for blue. We're going to do a recap real fast. So, our best in show for blue was Make Disappear, the counter spell. Our trap card was an offer you can't refuse, mostly for older formats. Uh, our sleeper card is still at the back. And our bomb in common was Expendable Lackey. Quick recap for the awards at the end of this as requested. I got you. I got you, right? YouTube folks, love you. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit all the buttons. Black is coming next. Don't go nowhere. Full set review. I'm Jim Davis. Let's go.